there's this feeling you get when you're trying to do something and you don't know how to do it. For example, if you sit down with a math book and you have a pencil in your hand and you read a math problem and you just don't know what to write, that's a terrible feeling. And in order to overcome that feeling, you have to kind of get used to it. In some sense, you kind of want to embrace it. You want to embrace the struggle. You know, you, you're, you're sitting there, you're going over your notes, you're, you're reading a book, you get to the problem, you read it, you don't understand it, and it's like, I, I don't know what to do. That's a feeling that you have to get used to. And when you get used to that feeling, when you start almost embracing that feeling, that's when you can take it to the next level. So what do you do when you encounter a problem you don't know how to do? Well, if it's from a book, you know, the obvious thing you want to do is, is you want to go back into that book and you want to read over everything. Look at all the key theorems. Look at all the definitions. You know, what, what's in there that can help you, you know, solve that problem. And a lot of times it's in that section. For example, if you have a homework problem or a problem from a book you're using for self-study and it's from section 3.2, a, a lot of times it's going to be in section 3.2. There's going to be some theorem, some proposition, some lemma that's been proven or, or, or done in that section that's going to help you through it. Now, a lot of times it's not, and this is especially true in more advanced books. A lot of more, you know, advanced books in mathematics, they'll have like, you know, key theorems or key ideas in the exercises. And a lot of times uh, these key ideas and key theorems will take some ingenuity that is not really found in the book. So a lot of times you just have to, you know, look at other places, you know, go online, look at other books, you know, use your resources and be resourceful. But most of the time, and, and this is true for most books, most of the time, most problems, especially the problems, you know, near the beginning, you can, you can really find the answers within the book. But that difficulty, that feeling that you get when, when you don't understand, that's a feeling that you have to get used to. And again, it's almost like you have to embrace the difficulty. You have to get used to it. And I think that makes you better at mathematics because the next time you attack another problem or attack a different book, it's going to happen again. And the more you get used to being in that uncomfortable place of not knowing, the more you start to accept it as a reality of learning mathematics and you start to embrace it and you start to embrace the challenge. You know, I, I knew this guy once uh, in graduate school. I'll leave his name out of it. And we were doing some homework. I think it was, it was for an abstract algebra class. I think the class was called commutative algebra. That was the name of the class. It's funny because the class didn't really focus on commutative rings. But in any case, it had a lot of really hard advanced linear algebra and some really hard stuff in that class. And we had a homework assignment and it was like seven homework questions. And I had figured one out. And I was like, well, here, man, I've, I've got the solution. He, he was talking about how he was stuck and he was up till 3 a.m. and he was tired because you know, the homework was due and he just couldn't figure it out. And I had worked so hard on that problem. I was also really tired, but I was like, this, this guy's cool. I like this guy. I know he works hard. And plus I want to show him my solution, see what he thinks. You know, maybe he has some insights I can learn from him. It's all about sharing and caring, right? With your, with your fellow humans. So I was like, here you go, man. Here's, here's, here's my solution. You know, you take it. Here you go. And he did not want to look at my solution. And I was like, well, don't you want to see it? And he refused. He's like, no, no, I want to figure it out on my own. And, and I was just blown away. I, I was blown away by this guy because he chose to embrace the difficulty. And, and this is a big assignment, right? This guy is in graduate school. It's a pretty good school. You know, he's working hard in a class. I remember the professor. The professor passed away several years ago. Great, great man. Um, Semi-famous Indian mathematician. In any case, he chose to embrace the difficulty. That's what separates people who can succeed in mathematics, especially higher level mathematics, people who can embrace the difficulty. You know, I talk about books all the time on this channel, review tons of books. And one of the first things I always talk about is whether or not the book has solutions. And I do that because, you know, it obviously helps to have solutions. I mean, most math books <laughs> don't have all of the answers. And some of the math books you know, have some answers and a lot of them have no answers. A lot of old math books don't have answers at all. So I talk about the solutions because I know that I personally like having solutions. But at the same time, 
I know it's important to embrace the difficulty. And the reality is by picking up any math book, you're kind of forced to do it anyways because they don't have all the answers. So in order to progress, in order to do better in mathematics, in order to take it to that next level, you have to accept the fact that you're gonna get stuck. You have to accept the fact that you're gonna have struggles and you have to embrace it, embrace the grind, embrace the difficulty. And I think it's gonna make you you know, appreciate mathematics a lot more. And it's not just at the graduate level, you know, over the years of teaching, years of teaching thousands of students, I have noticed something that the really, really good students have. And it's that they have this ability to embrace the difficulty. And honestly, a lot of times, you know, they would come to my office and they would get stuck on a problem. And I'd say, oh, let me show you how to do it. And like, no, 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 I want to figure it out on my own, they'd say. And I was like, oh, oh, and it would kind of hurt me a little bit because I really wanted to show them how to do it because it was really easy in my mind because I knew how to do it. It's like, I'll show you how to do it. Don't let me show you. I'm like, no, no, I'll figure it out. I'm like, oh, and then they would leave and I'd feel a little bit crushed. You know, it's like a little part of me died because I wasn't able to show them the answer. But after they left, I thought, wow, wow. It's just like my friend in graduate school, right? These are students that are embracing the difficulty. And these are, these are undergrads or in a calculus class, maybe even a college algebra class or a statistics class. They're choosing to embrace the difficulty. And let me tell you, that is a rare breed. It is a rare breed. Very, very few people choose to embrace the struggle. Very few people like to go to that place. It's because it's almost like it's, it's, almost like it's anti-human, right? Think of it this way. When you encounter a difficulty in life, the immediate reaction is to back off, right? You want to back off and you want to like, hey, wait a minute. That's hard. I, I don't want to. I don't want to confront that. That that's that's bothering me. You know, we we tend to seek the easy way out. I mean, it's it's how it is. But those of us that study mathematics, a lot of us at least, we know that embracing that challenge is what it's about, and that's how you get better. So if you're watching this video and you're already embracing that difficulty, I want to know because I know a lot of you are. I know a lot of you watching this video embrace the struggle. You embrace the difficulty. You like solving hard math problems. You refuse to look. You'll sit there for hours and you'll just grind and just try to figure out the answer. And if you're watching this video and you're thinking, no, I don't want to grind. I want to go do something else. I want to go play video games. That's fine too, right? That's fine too. It's, it's whatever. But I'm just here to tell you that you can learn by embracing the difficulty. It can make you better at mathematics it can make you a stronger human being because by learning to embrace the difficulty in math, it will help you embrace other struggles in life, whether it be working out or other challenges you have at work with your family, relationships. You can embrace those struggles and you just become a stronger human being. And if you're not there yet, if you're not embracing the difficulty, if you're not at the point where you appreciate the challenge, it's okay, right? It's okay. I think you'll eventually get there if you keep doing mathematics. For me, it did not happen until I took advanced calculus. That's really when I was kind of forced to embrace the difficulty because up to that point, you know, everything was doable. You know, I was able to do really well in math. I was able to, you know, solve most problems and I would get stuck just like everyone else. I'm a human, but I was able to overcome it. And a lot of times I, would able, I was able to find answers in the back of the book or, you know, work with classmates. But when I got to advanced calculus, my class size was small. People in my class, I didn't really work with them. I didn't really know them that well. I was really alone. And I didn't really find that I had a lot of resources at the time. I didn't have this many math books. And so it was just me and my book and a piece of paper and a pencil. And I had to grind. And let me tell you, I grinded. Every single day I would come home from college, sit down at my desk and work on advanced calculus. I would read the book over and over again. I would struggle. That class consumed my life. It was extremely difficult, extremely, extremely difficult. And so if you're not embracing the challenge yet, maybe it's just because you haven't been forced to do it yet. And so maybe someday you will be. And if you already feel like you're being forced and you're not embracing it, try it. What do you think? Do you embrace the challenge? Do you think it's worth embracing the challenge? Leave any comments in the comment section below. Oh, before I forget, 
I do have an Instagram. It's kind of fun. I can post random stuff there. Uh, it's just fun. Plus, you can put music on there. I also have a Patreon, The Math Sorcerer. If you want to support my work here on the channel, consider that stuff. Until next time, good luck. Take care. Now go do some math.